Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome to part two of my New Zealand adventure. So after a wonderful stop in Auckland, I'm now down in Christchurch on the South Island. But today I'm heading to visit a very special car collection at a private racetrack. I'm off to visit David Dicker and to get there, we're going to be jumping in the helicopter. So let's get up in the air and over to the circuit and have a look at some rather awesome cars. Here's our little machine to get us started. Christchurch helicopters, let us jump in and get up in the air. This has not been a bad way to travel at all. Literally just down over my shoulder is the racetrack. We're gonna head in and have a look around. But how cool is this? Okay, and we come to land. Welcome to this very quiet and unassuming location, the home of Rodin Cars. Now inside these workshops and sheds we have the collection, we have the FZ, the most extreme single seater you can buy outside of Formula One, and plenty more to explore as well. And then over behind there is the racetrack. But let's head straight inside because I want to show you this FZ. In we go to the main part of this where we are greeted by some extraordinary race cars, but the one we have come to see is this sitting in at the center, the Rodin FZ. So David Dicker has taken on this project. It is the closest experience to a Formula One car that a privateer can drive. It's about 615,000 US dollars, plus taxes and duties and the like. But it has a Cosworth V8, 640 horsepower, 589 kilos of weight. But literally, you look at it, it has the aerodynamics and styling of that open single-seater race car. They've taken on this project, developed it further, so you have a carbon fiber bodywork Work that comes over from Italy. They're creating all sorts of titanium 3D printed housings and brackets right here at their location. It's got slick tires, obviously, this crazy, crazy wing at the back. But this is, well, just look at that. That's the titanium muffler, uh, obviously exposed to heat, hence the color changing. But this is full driving experience. You have a, a molded seat. You have the steering wheel that just looks incredible. The black and gold theme that carries on. But this is taking a project and developing refining parts, making them lighter and creating something that is, well, the closest you can get to the full racing experience. They run a couple of other cars, Formula 3 cars, just to gain experience testing. And if you come here as a customer to go out on the track, you'll step up through the different stages, the different types of vehicles, driving the 488 Challenge car before obviously having a go in the FZ. But this is well, it would be amazing to see it, but not in today's weather, unfortunately, with the rain um, that we, we've got coming down. But the Cosworth V8 presumably sounds really rather impressive. They've developed the car and taken and added in new parts. For example, the new windshield, all sorts of bolts, housings, joints and fixtures around the car. But that is... Well, just imagine the driving experience if you were out in one of those on the private racetrack right here. Let's head for a little wander around where some of this is actually made. Now, this is quite an evolutionary process and David has some very big visions for the future. We're in one of the workshops where the 3D printing machines are located and although I wouldn't necessarily normally show you this kind of environment, there are a couple of quite interesting things here that they're doing to develop and create these cars. And one lurking on this table, an example I can show you, is a bolt from inside the car. So this is the original steel bolt that's used. And although I can't actually show you the weight difference, of course, this is a new titanium example, which I would say is easily less than half of the weight. Multiply that by all of the bolts that are found inside the car, and you can take out quite a substantial amount. They're also 3D printing other components and parts that you can see. For example, the uh, shield around the muffler, components for the fixtures and mountings, all titanium printed. David's a big supporter of titanium, so very interesting to see uh, what they do with this and how they use it in future cars and components. As you can see, there is a lot of state-of-the-art equipment and machinery. This will eventually be the carbon manufacturing for components around the car, but while we're here, just quickly, let's take a look at this wheel. This is a 3D printed example of the wheel for the car that can eventually be made out of titanium, be even lighter than magnesium, and you can see that even the spokes are actually hollowed out, but they do these 3D printed parts because it allows them to size up other components based on that, so that's just a, a kind of sample for that. And then here, we have a piece of carbon fiber with the Rodin car crest on it. Again, just an example of what can be done in here. 
One of David's personal race cars is the Diablo SVR, the one make series that Lamborghini ran in the 90s. Now my hand is awkwardly hovering at the left side, covering up something that you're not allowed to see. So we will just skip past that for the moment and head towards some other race cars we have here, including a 458 Challenge, quite a victorious car from the first season of the Asia Pacific Challenge race series. In fact, you can see that from its victory stickers in the window there. And also the new McLaren 570S GT4, one of just a handful of them that is over here in New Zealand. Here we have the collection. So let us head in, just walk down this little line of cars. David's actually owned 11 Ferraris. Every Ferrari he's ever bought from new, he still has, which I think is really quite cool. We've got the yellow 488 GTB, 599 GTB, 458 Italia, black with gold wheels, the Diablo SV, so the road version of the race car that we just saw, the hardcore version of the Diablo. Probably everyone's familiar with the Aventador SV. That was one of the earlier Super Veloces. We've got a car he raced in Australia and finished the race, even with that state. What do we have here? Impreza. Those are quite, I guess, in out here. Impreza WRX. The Lotus 340. Funny, quirky little thing. And fun story about this. If I come around towards the back, it has a British number plate, which is just hilarious. Um, obviously, we've got the GT3 RS, which is looking very much like it's been driven and used. The Lotus Exige V6 Cup. Those are a lot of fun. And then at the back here, we have a yellow F12 TDF. These seem to be, well, nearly everywhere out here right now, but this is one of my favorite cars in the world. The sound, the looks, the feel, the drama of it, the whole experience, just absolutely awesome. Anyway, how's that for a, a little garage of, of supercars here? The 488 is emerging from the garage. David has very kindly just invited me to go for a lap or two with the 488 around the track. So we've seen it from the air. We just went for a quick run around in a ute, given where we are, that made sense, just to have a look and scope it out a little bit. But this is, of course, Ferrari's mid-engine supercar. So we've got the twin turbo, 3.9 litre V8. We have over 600 horsepower, 670 horsepower, in fact, out of the 488. I've not really driven one properly before, but obviously, given the conditions today, given there is water, surface water, sitting on the tarmac. This will be slightly more gentle than it could otherwise be, but in any instance, it's just awesome to have the opportunity and go out and experience and discover a little bit. This is a track literally in the back garden. I mean, it's right kind of down there. You can see it over the back. It's very long. There are actually two tracks here. There's a stage uh, two down in the base and then up at the top as well. So different options, different routes. But let me jump in. I've plugged my cameras in already and uh, head on out. Here we go. So the engine it's warm already, it's been sitting for a moment. I need to get myself a little bit comfortable, of course, when getting into a new car. Just positions, belt up. Okay, for it, I do like how in the arches, when you look in the windows, you see inside the, uh, in the mirror, sorry, inside the uh, side vents. There's not too much to move because nobody else should be here anywhere. We're in race, I'm gonna put it down into sport mode. Maybe actually I'll just start in wet, take it gently, uh, just to get, get going. I will take it out of auto. There we go. So we are manual on the paddles. Let us just go for a quick little wander, a gander, and explore the track here. It's not actually the first ever time I've driven a 488. I've driven one, I think, once or twice before, but it'd be interesting. Would you still like to see a, a proper video? Obviously, I'd love to drive the piece through it at some point, but. It has the most fabulous gearbox. The speed of the shifts and then the noise when you do open up the valves. This is really a game of exploration because I obviously don't really know the track at this moment in time, but if you were driving down here in the FZ, you would unleash and put your foot down completely down here. You've got a 900 meter straight, dead straight. I can imagine on a sunny day, that would be beyond epic. To be honest, even in wet mode, this sounds pretty decent. Let's put it up one notch into sport. The tarmac is actually slightly drying from the rain earlier. The biggest worry when driving in an unfamiliar place, especially one that is surrounded by wet grass, is that if you go off, you are literally just going to be sailing on the grass until you hit a tree or an obstacle or 
gravity doesn't sting and you go off the side. So we don't really want to do that. I'm almost treating this a little bit like driving on a brisk road rather than a racetrack, which I think is quite a nice way to do it because it means I can get a good feel for the car and actually use some of the revs, but maybe in a slightly more real world format. And you really do get a sense with a Ferrari that the steering is pinpoint sharp. This engine has next to no turbo lag for a twin turbocharged V8. The grip and front end is incredible. The shift, the sort of almost slightly injected upshift kick that you get in the back at high revs. the track is this little area that you can see just here are the new garages that are being built so this is where they'll be hosting customers and having the pit boxes almost for the FZs as they come through it's actually set out in a really cool way we had a quick glance in there as well but just put my foot down goodness me this thing does get moving there is no question about that you can't do that on a public road but you can do it here on the racetrack so we just clock in a few laps surface. So let's just put it into race mode, just for a little bit of experience of slightly more slip, although I'm not anywhere close to the edge of traction in this car at the moment. There's an extra bit of runoff on this corner, but we don't want to use it unless we uh, need to. So. very smooth nice tarmac obviously you can go into wet mode into bumpy road mode oh no bumpy road is automatic with wet if you're in sport you can press bumpy road and make the suspension softer and just drive it like an ordinary car you can put it into automatic the gets the seven speed double clutch gearbox is super super smooth i don't really know how you can kind of fault this car the only thing maybe would be that it misses the naturally aspirated engines of the previous generation i do wonder what the pista is going to sound like inside at the moment though let's just put it back up a upper mode or two into manual hold the gearbox and if you hold down the downshift paddle if i keep coming to a stop it will automatically downshift to the lowest gear that it can ac actually go to for that speed or depending on the revs <laughs> uh, this is this is heavenly awesome you have got to love the feel of a Ferrari. These radius corners are awesome, they're consistent radius. Some of the other corners open up towards the outside. The track has been designed by David, he's created it how he wants it, to test, to develop, to experience, to be safe within reason, but also to allow a car like the FZ and like some of their future ideas to really be driven hard, aggressively, and set some proper performance and use the downforce, which is really, really cool. Anyway, let's just go for, I guess, a final round for a last little bit of fun and then uh, head back in. Now if I hold the paddle and on the brake, it's so awesome. Love it, absolutely love it. 
know, I think I have a new found respect for the 488. This has been really enjoyable. Safe to say that was epic fun. I think I could literally keep going forever. Although I say that eventually the fuel tank would run out. However, just have a look down here where you can see the lower parts of the track with some blind corners, blind crests, slightly more dangerous if you don't know where you're driving, but also just developing it a bit further as well down there, which is really awesome. But this is, I mean, how cool is this? A private racetrack just here to test the Rodin FZ, to have the collection of cars that we've explored through as well Awesome, awesome fun, wonderful day. Also coming here by helicopter, thanks to Christchurch Helicopters. But a big thanks to David for the opportunity to have a look around, to see the FZ, to drive the 488 on the racetrack. I don't think, other than maybe a little bit more sunshine, a day could really get better than that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. As always, I really appreciate your support. And thank you very much to the team here who have hosted me today. What an awesome time I've had. Anyway, the adventure continues onwards with this trip to New Zealand. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.